What's at the bus stop? Bus stop. Just <laughs> stop and eat some breakfast. Tells you everything you need to know right there. I got everything to leave you for real. One of everything. You get it all here at the best stop. You gotta get your grits in the morning. <laughs> It's something to see, you 
uh, every mile, like every mile, there's um, a lane blocked where they're picking up everybody's debris that's on the side of the road. And that, so far, that's just, it just continues. Um, hey, stick with us. Where's the fish? This is uh, Grand Isle, the recovery. Uh, here we go. We're 50 miles out. We'll see what happens. Come and join us. We're out right here on the main drag. I mean, check out the telephone poles here. I mean, check these guys out. These are the old poles. You just turn, turn around and towards the left of uh, the screen there, look at the new poles going up. Look at the old poles on the right side. And these guys are kicking butt. These linemen are kicking butt. They, we were wondering, there's no way, there's no way there's electricity to this island. But check this out. These guys are cleaning up. We're gonna go over and check out the levee. Uh, we're gonna go check out the levee and see uh, how that held up. Come on, Alicia. Corville. I'm standing in the middle of the main street here in Grand Isle, Louisiana. It is pitch black. There is no electricity here, guys. Nothing. Unless you've got a light. I mean, there's no way you can find yourself around. I mean, it's just crazy dark. Reminds me during Hurricane Ike, you would always hear those generators in the background and it was just an eerie, eerie sound. And then they would go out and you'd hear them start back up. I'm telling you guys, hey, thank you for staying with us today. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna get up. We're gonna check around town, maybe to hopefully talk to somebody and see what happens here in Grand Isle, Louisiana. Y'all stay with us.
my gosh. Go. Oh, oh my gosh. Guess who I'm with? I'm with hey. Land Divot. Hey. We are here. Where are we? We are in Grand Isle, Louisiana. Crazy Grand Isle. Crazy Grand Isle. Recovering Grand Isle. On the other side of it now. Uh, rebuilding the island. That's it. Oh, man. I can't tell you how stunningly beautiful this place is on one side and just devastatingly yeah you know a mess i think we can speak for most of south louisiana when we say that we've probably seen the best of the best and the worst of the worst at this point at this point in the year that's crazy yeah it is um the sights i can't imagine what it looked like when you got in here yeah it's kind of like the further down you drive down la1 the, the the destruction gets a little more and a little more and a little more and when you hit grand now it's finally like yeah you're here <laughs> Speaking of here, <laughs> we're here at Yum. They serve breakfast and lunch, sometimes dinner. They got plate lunches. Um, oh this God. is actually the only restaurant that's open right now on Grand Isle. This is supposed to be Keith's. <laughs> <laughs> it makes for a good shot, though, if anyone is hungry. <laughs> we do not have lights and we do not have power or water, but we do have fried fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. This tells you how resilient. Not what? only you guys, how resilient, you know, Louisiana Absolutely. Are Listen, down. I've never seen a bunch of people lose so much, but then do for other people than I have in this season. That's crazy. Yeah, it it's, it's really speaks something not only about the people of Grand now, but the people in South Louisiana. Um, oh, yeah. And probably throughout the country in general is like, you know, when push comes to shove, we can have differences and we can have arguments and this and that. But at the end of the day, if end this is day. your home, you have to do your part to get back what was lost. Absolutely. You know, one thing real quick. You know, you're from here and you've got absolutely devastated by a hurricane. And of course, I'm from New Orleans. And I think what we share in common is, is you may be able to wipe out the structure. You can't wipe out what's in our soul and no, what's in our spirit. Absolutely. The place, Grand Isle, the That's place it. in New Orleans. That's it's right it. here. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, uh, a lot of people that have places down here and a lot of people that visit here they know the significance that this community has on their lives in general and each season that you go through you know you're not really here during the winter but once that season that that the weather gets right and the fishing is good <laughs> this place becomes a whole lot special to a lot of people a whole lot of but stuff. as delicious as this was a little more on the serious side you know, a couple of questions came up while we were eating. Um, one of the big things is we know that this is a tourist community. And so that means a lot of tax revenue and all is generated from tourism, restaurants and the, you know, the bars or whatever it is that might be open. But with all this devastation, there's just a handful of them here. So how is the community surviving? How are they doing physically, emotionally, financially? Emotionally, I think everyone's pretty, pretty exhausted. Um, Spiritually, I think we are well. We are a resilient community. Um, the businesses that are operational, that can operate, are up and running. Awesome. So um, if you do find yourself in Grand now working on any of your things and you can support the local businesses, absolutely do so. Right. Um, for any of the businesses that are currently shut down, that are planning on opening, put it in your schedules to come next year and support these small businesses because they will be back. Um, there, we may be a tourist-based community, but we are no stranger to seasonal yeah. weather. And to me, this is a season. This is a season yeah. of you know regression that we're going to go through in order to come to the revival, I guess you can call it. A great um, revival it's going to be. Man. It will be beautiful. <laughs> the fishing will come back. The waterways will come back. The businesses will come back. Um, Right now, we're just really focused on getting our infrastructure back and setting up our home base again for our people to come back home to. So, and that's a good point. You know, this is a tourist community and Grand Isle loves its tourists. They want you to come fish. They want you to come enjoy this beautiful land, but not right now. No. Not right. They, listen, uh, as much as we love this island and we love everyone being here, it's not a pleasant place to be right now. Um, there's not running water at all times, electricity. Some places have, are lucky enough to have generators. Um, some places do not. 
uh, lots of traffic. Yeah. It, it takes you a long time to get to anywhere on the island. Yeah. So if you don't have patience, definitely don't come. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, our, our grocery stores have limited things. Our right. restaurants have limited services. Not only to mention that, but I mean, with the worker shortage already that we were dealing with, right. it's even yeah. more of a, an issue now because people lost their homes. No, absolutely. You know? I am so surprised, and I, and I guess I shouldn't have been. The traffic is, there's a lot of traffic right now. Yeah. But what is nice to see is it is so many trucks and tractors and um, you know electrical people coming and going. I mean, there's yes, a lot we of traffic. Have, we have the resources here yeah. to bring back this island. That's why I am not worried one bit that mm -hmm. this island is not going to survive this. Uh, is it going to be a, a ki kind of a lengthy process? Probably so, but we are used to it. We are resilient and we can absolutely overcome it. It's just like, if you don't have to be here, there's absolutely no reason to be here right now because you're just adding to the traffic. You're just right. adding to the chaos. And yeah. you can't put you your know. boat in if you, you know, if you're absolutely. thinking about it. I kind of got the questions in my head all the All right, so we talked about not only the devastation of the storm, spiritual, physical challenges that you guys are going to face and i think as we talk the challenges are going to come in stages immediate challenges what do you think they are immediate challenges are to assess the damages and get the proper response for the places according to their needs okay. for example to make sure our elderly people have exactly what they need we do have teams that are running on the ground Aww. knocking on these people's doors making sure they have what they need our fire department has been around checking on these Aww. people and making sure that if they don't have the resources that they're getting the resources but a big challenge right now is that these fire department members and these people that are helping they don't have a place to live wow. you know they're all bunking up and they're all um, you know, just bunkering down. Uh, it's the same thing at the end of the island. We have a, a barge that houses some of the town workers, you know, but they still have families that are not here. They still have houses they need to take care of. And so a big challenge is to find grace in this period mm -hmm. where everyone's trying to do their best and trying to stay on top of everything, but it's just, it's a lot in this season, Michael. you know? And then, so once we get power and once we get water and once we secure our infrastructure with our natural gas and things like that, we'll start to see people come back more and more and more. And then our challenges are gonna shift a little bit, Absolutely. you know? And then from there, now, then you're gonna start seeing, okay, now let's invite some people down and do some cleanups. Hey, how yes. can we help our neighbors here? Because now we have the infrastructure to support people. We have the restrooms to support people to be able to go use, you know? Yeah, and then that's a good point. You know, like Keith and I, we want to be here. We want to help clean up. But yeah. to clean up right now? It's not for anybody without, like, a big old tractor and truck and right. things. Yeah. So but there will become a time very shortly yes. where you're going to need bodies to do the smaller cleanup that is immense right yes. now. I mean, yes. I can see it. Yes. You know, I want to get in there and help, but in all yeah. honesty, I'm in the way. Yeah, that's exactly it. As, as politely as to put it is, you know, unless you have expertise in, in this sort of cleanup, yeah. it's better to just let the professionals do their job and then support, pray through this season. And then when we're ready for the next stage, you will be called upon and your help will be requested and right. needed and appreciated. Um, but it's all going to come in seasons, you know, yeah. and then a way you can support grain now in the next season, like after we're done with the cleanup, is come back. Come back. Put yeah. your money back into the economy. Enjoy this beautiful paradise that we, we fought so hard to keep. Right. What can I do right now? Right now, today, um, as we watch this, what can we do to help you guys? On our website, townofgrainnow.com, uh, we have a link for two different nonprofit organizations that have been donating resources, okay. money to families, um, different projects on the island. The first club is uh, the Grand Nile Garden Club, and then the second club is the Friends of Grand Nile. Both nonprofits, both have really helped us all out during the storm, um, kept in very good contact with the council and the community as far as needs assessments, and they have the resources to, to to help distribute them where they're needed. All right, great. So if you want to donate to them, there are two very credible resources that we could, that go directly back into the community. That's fantastic. Yeah. I love, love, love that the best way I can help is to come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
it's going on. I'm well, that's back. the thing. A lot of people, a lot of people have said, "Oh, this is the one. This is the one that Grand Isle is just going to be done. This is the one." And if that know. were the case, there would not be the traffic that there is the now. The traffic. There is would not crazy. be the people busting their butts to get things rid back built now. If that was the story, yeah. so there's not a bone in my body that believes that we won't come back from this. Oh, there's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> A lot of work. Oh my gosh, guys. I wish you could see this. Don't come right now to see it. But not only is the community surviving in this what looks like a war zone, I don't think I've really seen anybody down. I mean, in moments, but it's like move forward, move on, that's head strong. It. Survival, the phoenix will rise from the yeah. ashes. You know? that, that's what you always hear about Louisiana people being resilient. Yeah. But this is the prime example that, Ooh. yes, I have cried. I have been PO'd. I have had my moments. But those moments are few and far in between because you realize how much yeah. work needs to be done. So you can't sit in that space forever. You mm. have to move forward. And that's what this community is the best at. It is. Yeah. I've witnessed it. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, man, you are amazing. Oh, thank you. Oh, God, you're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, Land again. We we met on this journey of where's the fish, yeah. just kind of randomly. Yeah, friends for life. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate what y'all bring. Like I've said this before, I appreciate that y'all created a platform for this discussion of fishing and yeah. fishing in different areas that. You get into fishing not just because it's fishing, but for the community aspect, yes. for the for the experience. And I feel like traveling around and actually getting to understand the communities you're going in, the people in those communities, and then coming back, maybe when things aren't as glamorous, it really shows that the effort and the appreciation that you put into what you do here on Where's the Fish. Oh, thank I love you. it. We do love it. Yeah. And Lan, we love you and we will be back. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
a day and what crazy sights we've seen. And I am sitting next to this handsome gentleman. And who are you? <laughs> Irvin L. Magri Jr., just better known as Irv Magri. <laughs> Mr. Magri, it's such a, such a pleasure to meet you. Well, my pleasure, and thank you for coming to our island paradise. And I do mean that. I've, I've been here for 74 long years. Long time. On and off, but mostly now on, past 21 years. Most definitely. And even more importantly, where we're sitting right now is or was, we're not was, quite sure. Was my home. Was your it's home. It's still my property, it's still my home. Uh, basically what Alicia is speaking about is simply that we were hit by a category five storm called Ida. And uh, no, she was not a sweet lady. She was very devastating, quite frankly. And uh, she devastated my home. I lost everything. However, my good friend Brandon is here and uh, we're trying to secure some plaques, uh, and uh, some uh, scrapbooks and files over the years, my files. So, Mr. Irv, you said you've been here 74 years. Four years on this property? On this property. It's amazing. And where exactly is this property located? We're located on the extreme western end of the seven and a half mile island. We're right before the bridge, <clears throat> the only bridge that connects Chenea, which in French means place of the oaks to the island in before the great hurricane of 1893 on October 1 when we lost 2,000 people, 2,000 wow. people in one night on October 1, 1893. That was a lot of oak trees right before you came to the bridge. It was a high natural ridge. So it's called Chenier. Yeah. Now Chenier comes over to Grand Isle and I'm on the extreme western end. I'm very, very close to like Bridgeside, Wakeside Marina and of course the only bridge that connects us on the oldest and longest highway, Highway 1. So, Mr. Irv, I have to say, as beautiful as this place is, of course, this house has been absolutely devastated. I mean, there is, it's, there's, there is no more, unfortunately. I hate to say When it. Aegis Insurance <laughs> looks at this, yeah. they, they totaled it. I mean, they were quite proud of totaling. I said, what else could you do? I am completely it's total. I, I'm demolished. And yeah. uh, what hurts the most is... Uh, not the monetary or the rebuilding. I lost a lot of memories. I kept everything meticulously organized and all the file cabinets out to sea. Well, Ida, Ida was a, not, not a, a, not a nice lady. Not she a, nice, a lady. nice lady. Well, what are your plans here? I mean, there's no I, way you're giving this up. Oh, no. I'm a grandillion. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming back. Uh, the mayor said, you know, as long as there's one grade of sand. And I second that. I certainly. In fact, I first that, yes. yes. I'm coming back, nothing's gonna keep me away from here except God. And uh, I hope to be buried right here when I pass on. I love it. Well, you know, we'll be back. You better come back. We will. Y'all are master fishermen. <laughs> well, we try anyway, we're not sure about that. Y'all have a great show. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you know, it, it makes it fun when we get to meet people like you. Well, this makes it makes the day. Bring the passion forward. And look, uh, where's the? Uh, well, I had the uh, the gold, the, uh, the cargo minnows. Oh no, oh, they're no right he, they're, they're <laughs> okay. Now, He's so you're listening to this. I'm not. I'm not one of these fair weather friends. I went and got them cargo minnows. <laughs> so when they leave here, they got to go catch some redfish, speckled trout, and maybe a flounder. Maybe or two. a flounder or two. Because we have tremendous fishing. We're one of the best fishing spots in the world. We're, We're always located in the top 10 in the United States. And I have fished everywhere. I had my own fishing show called Sportsman's Paradise on Channel it. 4 in New Orleans. And uh, I promise you, I've fished a lot of places. Can't top Grand Isle. Love it. And we're coming back strong. And uh, so are the fish, by the way, I did not hurt the fish. Well, you're, the, it's such a pleasure to meet you. And My I pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. And I wish you all the best on this rebuild. And you're going to come back bigger and stronger. I can see it. My nickname is Relentless. Relentless it is. <laughs> and I'll come back. I'll go, with God's help, I'm coming back. Uh, <laughs> Jesus has been very good to me. And uh, Grand Isle is here to stay. Uh, we are a natural island, and we have the best fishing in the world. There awesome. you go.
remote island whose people are known wide and far, a spot which is by nature gifted with beautiful beaches, great fishing, and so very much more. Grand Isle, America's most enchanted isle, where surf fishing and charter boats ply the gulf's warm and fertile waters for fishing within our island's seven sensational miles. Grand Isle, with its natural sandy beaches and historic fort, we salute Louisiana's island paradise and her natural deep water port. May God keep and protect our peaceful island so that generations to come will know the immense beauty and mystique where warm, gentle Gulf breezes forever flow. This poem was adopted by the Grand Isle Jefferson Parish Town Council on June 13, 1981 by a unanimous vote as the Grand Isle's official poem. Find out more about this complete poem. Author Irvin Lawrence McGree, Jr., December 21st, 1988. And God bless the people of Grand Isle, Louisiana.